mean, I can tell you what I think happens to be more or less right, but there isn't any reason why you should pay any attention to it. Now you know why they're out to destroy you. Today there is so much confusion about what Christianity is, because everything I thought that was Christianity, I found out wasn't. If this continues, there will be an overthrow of all things. Yea, this change and overthrow is deliberately planned. There is nothing going on today in the United States of America by accident. Nothing. There is nothing going on in the Catholic Church today that's happening by accident. They were acting on an ancient hope that is meant to be fulfilled. If you understand esoteric writing, what you do is you try to confuse it so the common people like you will not understand what's said. So you take an idea and you put it at the beginning and the end of the sentence and then you intersperse all sorts of uh, you know, things in the middle to confuse common people like you. And it all goes back to these ancient times and tapping into the mystery of religion. The, the occult is in total working control of America today and that is why we're at war in the Middle East. What is it all about? It is part of the continuing world revolution, it is part of the move to bring about World War III and ultimately then the One World Order and the New World Religion. This information is backed up by scholars, teachers, philosophers, doctors, and professionals in every respective field all around the world. The reasons why the majority of people don't know about this is because over 80% of the population gets their world news strictly from the mainstream media. And if you trace every major media station's chain of command to the top, you will find the same people who own the corporations that lobby every high-ranking political official into place. Westinghouse and good old GE. They own networks from CBS to CNBC. They can use them to say whatever they please and put down the opinions of anyone who disagrees. Or stuff about TCB. What a PCB. They come from electric power plants built by Westinghouse and GE. They can give you lots of cancer that can hurt your body. But the big shots don't care. They're all sitting pretty thanks to corporate welfare. What's that now? And for those of you who are unaware of this one world government and one world religion, I challenge you to do an internet search on the New World Order. You will be overwhelmed by the amount of people trying to get the word out to the masses. This exemplifies the findings that 87% of the population formulates their belief structure according to other people's ideas. Only 13% formulate their beliefs on logic and evaluation. And sadly, the two greatest factors that lead to the ignorance of the public are as follows. You support the mission! We should run it here! How brave you are! Real careful as you march towards that Capitol building. Be real careful for who you think is in there waiting to help you. Be real careful. Group think. We're on our way to a one world government. Unless we, the people, say no, this will not be tolerated. 
It is a term to describe a group unwilling to look beyond the overall consensus of the herd. Many times it is out of a lack of drive or ambition to ask original questions to arrive at genuine answers. But more importantly and dangerously, it is also an occurrence that spawns from the fear of looking foolish in front of peers. Both religion and politics are forms of groupthink. Words such as patriotism and faith are both fancy words that ultimately mean blind submission. Supposedly, it is considered heresy or unpatriotic to question the words of your leader. So the fear of upsetting the superior higher power has forced the herd to practice groupthink regardless of what it leads to. And one of the greatest examples of groupthink is the stigma given to conspiracy theories. The phrase conspiracy theory gives a distinct impression to the average person. The JFK assassination, Area 51, Roswell, government cover-ups, strange disappearances. These subjects probably sound a bit too fantasy for the average person, and it's quite understandable. They're supposed to sound made up. Throughout the mistranslation of time and embellishment of these stories, facts were added or omitted. Some may be true and some may be false, but one thing is for sure. If a global secret needed to remain hidden yet began emerging among the public, the best cover-up is to embellish or alter the story until it sounds ludicrous. So what happens when the secret involves the government and the government has intimate ties to the mainstream media? And the mainstream media, as said before, has been proven to sway at least 80% of the public's opinion. The logic is undeniable. Media in every form is put in place to make people feel stupid for even keeping an open mind towards conspiracy theories. Movies, books, fairy tales, and folklore are all tools to make the average person feel insane for supporting or believing in a conspiracy. And why shouldn't they? Our leaders have no problems telling us not to investigate or believe in these theories. Let us never tolerate outrageous conspiracy theories concerning the attacks of September the 11th. Malicious lies that attempt to shift the blame away from the terrorists themselves. The most basic of pagan practices is the control of human population to have a perfect balance between man and nature. The goal is to bring the population down to 500 million, which is over a 90% reduction in humanity. Now that we have abandoned everything we've been trained to think prior to this moment, we can start looking at the world for what it is, instead of what people tell us it is. Open your eyes today as if you've never seen the world before, and you will begin to notice that the goal of population reduction is everywhere around us. Let me assure you that absolutely nothing that I'm going to tell you is exaggerated, is interpolated, or is imagined. Everything I'm going to tell you is documented. He who controls food controls the world. Well, they said in 1962, we're going to work toward total global implementation of Codex Alimentarius on December 31st, 2009. There were sort of guidelines. Now, Codex Alimentarius Commission is administered by the World Health Organization, WHO, and the FAO, the Food and Agriculture Organization. They fund Codex and they run it at the request of the UN. So they're mommy and daddy to Codex Alimentarius. In 1994, Codex with no notice here in this country whatsoever, declared nutrients put on your intellectual seatbelts, declared nutrients to be toxins. They're poisons. Under Codex, every dairy cow on the planet must be treated with Monsanto's recombinant bovine growth hormone. Furthermore, under Codex, every animal used for food on the planet must be treated with subclinical antibiotics and must be treated with exogenous growth hormones. If you do the numbers in the WHO-FAO projections, 
the epidemiological projections, they estimate, not I, that just the vitamin and mineral guideline alone, when it goes into global implementation on December 31st, 2009, will result in a minimum of three billion, that's B, bad, big, billion deaths. One billion through simple starvation. Those folks who die are not particularly economically successful from the point of view of the corporations, but the next two billion. They will die from the preventable diseases 